There seems to be a lot of talk about pacifiers these days and a lot of hate on pacifiers. And I'm here to tell you all about my opinion on pacifiers because at the end of the day, no matter what professional you're talking about, it's honestly all based on opinion. So I'm gonna read you an email that one of my clients sent me and I wanna share this with you so we can dive into it and talk about how I handle this as a sleep consultant. She says, hi, Missy, I know we're meeting on Friday and I can't wait. As you can see, our nights are a complete disaster. My question for you ahead of Friday is the pacifier. We use the pacifier to get her down for naps and nights, but she's too little to keep it in herself. I'm not sure if that's why she is waking up so frequently. What is your opinion on pacifiers? We aren't even getting a three hour stretch lately at nights and I'm wondering if that's why. Now, this mom is wondering if her baby's pacifier is just another negative sleep prop association or if it could help or if it's hindering her baby's sleep. Long answer short, I'm all about the pacifier, whether you call it a pacifier, a binky, a nook, a soother, what else are they called, a dummy, Whatever you call them, I'm all about it. Bring them on. If you're familiar with Dr. Harvey Karp's five S's, you know that sucking is one of the five S's. If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, then after this video, go check out this video right here on the five S's. And what the five S's are in a nutshell are basically the five ways to soothe a newborn, sucking being one of them. So in my opinion, offering a pacifier is soothing to your baby. That's why some of them are called soothers. Today I wanna to talk all about the myths surrounding giving your child a pacifier and other people's opinions and why I think those opinions are poop. Before I jump into those myths, I do want to disclose that before six months old, your baby is not fully dependent on the pacifier. They still have that sucking reflex and they need to suck to be able to soothe themselves. That's why so many families and babies get stuck in the cycle of nursing to sleep through the night because it's comforting to the baby. Now that doesn't mean that I'm not here to hate on anybody who is feeding their baby to sleep through the night, but we're gonna talk about the sucking reflex and how using the pacifier can help with that soothing mechanism. Before your child is even six months old, they still don't have self-regulation skills. So whether you're working on teaching these self-soothing skills or if you're using a pacifier to help soothe your baby to sleep, there's no reason to hate on the pacifier and make it seem like this big, terrible thing. It's a soother. Now, even though I'm telling you right now that I'm all about the pacifier, I am all about the pacifier within certain limitations. After six months old, your baby will become dependent on the pacifier. And at this point, you should, okay, I shouldn't say you should, should be sleep training, but in my opinion, sleep training at six months old is a really great time to teach your baby these lifelong sleep skills. In my customized sleep plans that I write for my families that I work with, I give them specific pacifier directions, and I will share some of those with you today. Rule number one is that after six months old, the pacifier is only used for sleep. If your baby's not sleeping, your baby's not getting the pacifier. It should become part of your routine when you get your baby up from nap or in the morning that you are having them take the pacifier out of their mouth and tell them to put it in the crib, and they should put it in the crib on their own. You you can say bye bye passy or see you later or whatever you want to do to bid your pacifier adieu but the pacifier stays in the crib. Rule number two is that you only give the pacifier to your baby after your bedtime routine. So if they want it again, they need to replace it on their own. So if they don't know how to do this yet, you need to either teach them how to replace it on their own or they're going to learn different self-soothing skills. Now, if your child is still attached to the pacifier after you've already sleep trained and you're going to continue letting them have it, I recommend letting them keep it until they're two and a half or three years old. At this point, your child will be able to understand that you're taking it away and why you're taking it away. And if you need to know how to do this step by step, then watch this video right here after you watch this video. I'm offering you a more gentle approach to getting rid of the pacifier as opposed to just taking it away cold turkey. Now that doesn't mean that your child is not going to cry or be upset in the process, but it does make it a little bit more fun so make sure you check out this video but now I want to jump into busting those myths about pacifiers myth number one is that your child is going to have dental issues 
I have three kids and two out of three of my kids used their pacifiers until they were about two and a half years old. They don't have dental issues. And I know I'm basing that off of my experience with pacifiers, but I do not see children walking around out in the world who all have dental issues. And the main reason being because they use pacifiers. And not for nothing, but these days in America, like 95% of people need to get braces. So even if it does contribute to some dental issues, it's all gonna get fixed at some point anyways. And maybe that's just, I mean, that is definitely my opinion, but. Myth number two is that giving your child a pacifier is going to cause speech problems or speech delay. Now, I can understand that if you're letting your child have their pacifier 24 seven, they're not gonna wanna talk because they're constantly sucking on their pacifier to be soothed. However, when you work with me in my program, I do not allow your child to have the pacifier 24 seven. So they're not going to have any speech problems because they're only having their pacifier to fall asleep. Myth number three is that your child is going to become overly dependent on the pacifier. And in terms of sleep, yes, this can happen. However, if you're not going in the room every time your child wakes up to give them the pacifier, then they're going to learn to self-soothe in either different ways or to find the pacifier on their own and put it back in their mouth on their own. Therefore, they're not becoming overly dependent on it because they're independent. Makes sense to me. Myth number four is that using a pacifier or offering a pacifier is going to interrupt breastfeeding. Here we are again with me talking about my own experience and two out of my three kids who use the pacifier breastfed for over a year. Both like, oh, this just like, it blows my mind that this myth is out there because when my daughter was in the hospital, just born, uh, the nurses gave her a pacifier on like day two because she did not stop crying. She was a loud crier. She had these lungs that just traveled and she cried and cried and the nurses were like, are you opposed to giving her a pacifier? And I was like, well, I didn't want to because I don't, I don't want it to like interrupt the breastfeeding thing here. And they were like, well, and then we just kind of popped it in. And I've never had an issue. There's no nipple confusion. I mean, if a kid's hungry, they're gonna eat. And if they wanna be soothed, they're gonna suck. So honestly, I'm debunking that myth with my own opinion here. And myth number five is that your kid is gonna get sick so much more often because pacifiers are dirty. For one, wash your freaking pacifier. It's not that big of a deal. For two, if anything, your child's gonna have a stronger immune system because maybe they are getting some extra germs, but if they're building up their immune system by having a pacifier, then who cares? Now, I'm also gonna throw out there the fact that of my two children who use their pacifiers, when I took them away, they learned to self-soothe in different ways. My third child, who is a thumb sucker, has not learned how to self-soothe in other ways, and he is turning six years old, and he still sucks his thumb at bedtime. Now, he doesn't suck his thumb throughout the day, it's only a bedtime thing, and I don't really see a huge issue with it because it is his self-soothing mechanism, and I'm not, I'm not about to take that away from my baby boy. If we're gonna talk about dental problems, and we're gonna talk about germs, and all of those like different myths that people are associating with pacifiers, you can say the same exact thing about thumb sucking, and generally, when people are saying, or like recommending against using a pacifier, they say that children can use their fingers or their thumbs to self-soothe with something that's actually attached to them, but you can't take it away. You can take a pacifier away, you can't take a thumb away, and yes, they have like that nail polish you can put on, they have that cream that you can put on, and they have like gloves and different things that you can put on your child's thumb, but I'm just not about that. So I would rather your child get attached to a pacifier and be able to take it away from them when they're old enough to understand that they don't need it anymore and replace it with a lovey of some sort. And then to just let your child suck on their thumb constantly. So I, I mean, like you just, like you're the parent, you know your child best and you just have to weigh your options. And every child is different and I have concrete example of that because I have three children. Don't let any of this hoopla being anti-pacifier and any of that other stuff you see on the internet get you down if your child is attached to their pacifier. It's really not a big deal. 
unless it's a big deal, if you know what I mean. And what I mean, if you don't know what I mean, is that it's only a big deal if it's interrupting your child's sleep all hours of the night and you need to continue replacing it. And on that note, that's when you do need to take it away and have your child learn different ways to soothe themselves. But other than that, I'm, I'm all about it. Give your kid the pacifier and give them the skills to put it back in their mouth on their own so that they're not interrupting their sleep or your sleep throughout the night. Like I said before, if you're not familiar with Dr. Harvey Karp's five S's, then check out this video right here. And if your child is ready to ditch the pacifier, check out this video right here for some fun ways to help your child break the pacifier association. And keep blooming. Mwah.